Innovations in healthcare over the past century have contributed to the doubling of life expectancy in both high income and developing economies. This has helped expand the global workforce, drive economic growth, and improve the quality of life for many. Can this trend continue? And which aspects of health and medicine are likely to be impacted by innovation? To address such questions, creating healthy lives, the future of medical innovation has been chosen as the theme for this year's Global Innovation Index. Bruno Lanvin, one of the co-editors of the report and executive director for in Global Indices at INSEAD, joins us now. Bruno, thanks for joining us. Hey, Rachel. And so for the GII in 2019, who are amongst the top 10? Well, as in uh, previous years, uh, we still have a uh, high level of stability at the top. Uh, we have uh, Switzerland, uh, number one, again, uh, followed by Sweden and the USA. Uh, then we see uh, the Netherlands, the uh, UK, uh, Finland, uh, Denmark, Singapore, Germany, and Israel, who joins the top ten for the, the first time. The stability uh, is also clear if we take the top 25, where we have a number of uh, other European countries, uh, like Ireland, like France, uh, like Norway. Uh, we have indeed a strong European presence in the top 10, uh, 7 out of 10, and the top uh, 25, where we have another 6 between the rank of 12 and 24. Uh, one of the most remarkable changes uh, in the rankings is that uh, China, who broke into the top 20 last year, continues to move up and is now number 14. The, con the progress of China continues to be spectacular, especially if we look at the output side of the model, where China is number five in the world, due in particular to continued progress made by China in the area of patents, PTC type of performance, uh, and technological export. Um, it's likely that uh, the difficulties that a company like Huawei is going through right now is not going to impact in a durable fashion the innovation performance or technology export of China. Uh, similarly, the prospect for lower growth rates in China uh, should not be too worrying on the innovation side. Even with 6.2%, uh, China would be far above the average of other countries, and innovation is going to be seen as an area that will prepare the next wave of Chinese growth. Regarding other middle-income countries, uh, we have remarkable performance from countries like Malaysia and Bulgaria, uh, for instance, uh, but others uh, in other parts of the, uh, of the world are also showing that innovation continues to be seen as a priority and a critical tool for growth. Who are the innovation achievers in developing countries this year, and how are they able to create a virtuous cycle of development? In the, the Global Innovation Index, we call innovation achievers those countries who, although they are not among the leaders, do better than what their GDP per capita would suggest. Uh, the achievers this year include a number of Asian countries, uh, like Vietnam, like Thailand, uh, like uh, the Philippines, um, but also uh, African countries like Kenya and, and Rwanda. What is important in considering the ability of those innovation uh, achievers to turn their innovation success into durable engines for development and growth in the future is under three elements. Uh, number one, they need continuity. It's quite remarkable that a country like Vietnam has been among the innovation achievers for nine years in a row. So it is in that kind of situation that you have to see the effect of innovation policies and success in other parts of your development policy. The, the second one has to do with investment. Uh, you need continuity also in maintaining the level of private and public investment in innovation, uh, no stop and go uh, policy will uh, will work. And the um, the last uh, element, of course, is in having a longer term vision. Uh, innovation is not something that you uh, create 
uh, out of mere investment. It's a mindset that needs to be instilled into all layers of society and economy. And investing in education is a long-term investment. Investing in infrastructure, investing in governance uh, are all items that require this longer-term vision in which the involvement of politicians, policymakers at the highest level, but also the leaders of the business sector and civil society as a whole have crucial roles to play. In terms of the theme of this year's report, who are the champions of innovation when it comes to health and medicine? Well, traditionally, it's fair to say that health and medical innovation has been highly concentrated in the richer countries. It's still very much the case today. In terms of patents, for instance, the U.S. Uh, lead in terms of technology. Uh, the U.K. leads in biotechnology. Um, and Switzerland leads in the area of pharmaceuticals. So the geography of medical and health innovation is changing rapidly. A number of other countries have uh, put innovation in those areas at the top of their national innovation agendas. Singapore is one of them. China, of course. Uh, if we look at uh, China's patenting, it has increased by 20% in last year in biotechnologies and 30% in medical uh, innovation. Um, so this is bound to have uh, effects. A number of uh, heavily populated countries uh, also uh, giving increasing attention to innovation in some of the elements which are critical for the development, such as tropical diseases, uh, chronic diseases. Uh, this is the case in Mexico, in India, in South Africa, in Indonesia. So demography also dictates that health be put at the top of the uh, innovation agenda. We also see a very interesting dynamics uh, developing between artificial intelligence and health innovation. Um, Singapore has put health and medical among the top four priorities of its own AI strategy. Hong Kong has decided to establish two clusters, one on AI and one on health. Uh, these are developments that are going to have important consequences for emerging countries and possibly beyond in the years to come. What would you say are the key challenges facing the sector of innovation when it comes to health and medicine? Well, first, the, this is a field which is full of opportunities, uh, especially for emerging countries. A number of them are described in the various chapters of this year's report. Take the example of the use of drones in, uh, in Rwanda to take uh, blood samples and medicines to uh, remote uh, areas. Um, we also see in large geographies that the use of telemedicine and AI-based uh, solution is radically changing the landscape of access to health services. Uh, think of how artificial intelligence is now used in diagnosis and prognosis, but also to uh, create new molecules, to take them to the, the part of the human bodies where they will be most useful through a combination of nano, bio technologies and artificial intelligence. So opportunities are there. And the uh, innovation policies and innovative characteristics of each nation around the world will enable them to seize them uh, in one way or another. Yet there are three kinds of challenges that are worth considering in that area. They are ethical, social, and economic. Uh, on the ethical side, uh, genetic engineering has been seen as one area in which a number of principles and guidance are required, both from a public point of view and from a private point of view. Um, these principles have not been fully developed yet, and yet the urgency uh, is growing, uh, especially in the face of the increasing use of artificial intelligence in health and medicine. In addition, the social uh, challenges should not be ignored. Um, wealth buys health, which means that as the level of income per capita grows in emerging economies, they will be able to acquire uh, better access to health services, to develop better health strategies, which is good. But at the same time, we may see a dichotomy, whether in rich countries, for instance, the wealthier people will focus on longevity, on how to extend their own life expectancy, leaving other issues such as tropical diseases uh, for other areas of, of funding. 
uh, in emerging countries, we may have discrepancies between the uh, higher uh, classes, those with higher purchasing power, and others with little or no medical coverage. So this issue of where will innovation uh, be concentrated will be on those that attract the attention of the wealthier parts of our populations, or whether they will extend to larger portions uh, of the world population is something worth considering. In addition to the ethical and social dimension, the economic dimension is probably one that raises the biggest challenges. If indeed, as the report shows to some extent, uh, big data and artificial intelligence are becoming a bigger sort of player in the health equation, it means that those who hold the data those who are able to analyze it will get more and more power. This may mean that a large part of medical decision and health-related decision may move away from the medical professions to get into the hands of large data consortium, uh, Google, Facebook, uh, but also Baidu, Alibaba, uh, might be the next uh, caretakers of health in, in the world. Uh, insurance companies, because they can provide patients, because they may have the way to anticipate the kind of diseases you may be exposed to, will have a bigger say. This creates economic challenges in terms of the business models of the uh, health sector and also uh, give increasing importance to the first two challenges, which are both ethical and social. Facing those challenges, do you see a larger divide between rich and poor countries? There are two areas in which the gap uh, still uh, could increase very quickly if action is not taken rapidly. One, of course, is investment, because it's a question of availability of capital, both public and private, in which uh, typically poorer countries are more limited than richer countries. So additional efforts are probably required in that area to just maintain this level of continuity in public and private investment towards health and medical innovation. The second one is that of talent, that is creating the human resources that will be able to guide this innovation, to manage it locally, locally and to retain sufficient added value within the national economies as a result of that innovation will be critically important, and education has a critical role to play in that area. What can an organization like INSEA do to address the challenges that came up in this year's GII? Well, INSEAD is the ideal place to uh, do it for at least four reasons. Uh, first, INSEAD is the kind of uh, unique place where you can look both at macro and micro issue. We are about business, so we like to have a view from the ground, something that should be action-oriented. But because we are an international kind of entity, we also have this strategic geopolitical view of what is happening and what should be the trends we should be taking into account. This is what global indices are about. There are elements to inform debates which are both micro and macro. The second one is that INSEAD is about talent. Uh, we want to equip the business leaders of tomorrow with the tools that will enable them to be innovators. Uh, and whether it is in the field of health and medical innovation or whether it's in other sectors, it remains fundamental that innovation should be looked at as a mindset and not uh, a range uh, combination of recipes that you could instill uh, through the, the minds of your, your students. The third element is that uh, technology is very much at the core of how INSEAD looks at the future of its mission. Um, the upcoming inauguration of INSEAD's hub in San Francisco will help a great deal about that. So it's one of the reasons why what we are looking at in the area of health and medical, especially through the point of view of big data and artificial intelligence, is particularly well placed as a topic for INSEAD to focus on. And last but not least, uh, business for good. That's the axis, that's the priority for what INSEAD wants to do now and in the future. The recent creation of the Hoffman Global Institute for Business and Society is of course a major set in that context. And when we look at innovation 
and uh, SDGs, when we look at uh, uh, innovation and health, when we look at all these other dimensions of how we can make a world, the world a better place to live in, uh, INSEAD is indeed a great place to start from. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us, Bruno. Thank you. Thank you.